Hello, I'm Dean Karstens, and this is Dean's N Scale Trains. Today I'm going to start a four part series on servo motors, such as this one, in your railroad. Servo motors are very handy. They're small, they're reproducible in their position. They can be used for things like semaphore controls or, or controlling gates at highway crossings. Or what I'm going to do in this series is show you how to control your switches or turnouts, such as this one down here. You can see the servo motor there. At the end of the four part series, I will be, show you how to build and program an Arduino based controller for controlling up to 12 switches. Stand by and let's go. In this first video of my four part series, I will show you two popular and inexpensive examples of servo motors how they work, and how they are controlled. I will also show you a, an inexpensive tester you can buy and use to play around with servos to get to know them. In the second video of this series, I will show you how I connect the servo motor to a switch or turnout already mounted above the baseboard on my layout, and I'll give you some hints on how I hide them. And finally, I'll talk about how you can adapt a servo to mount below the baseboard if you need to do that. And for those of you who already have some experience in working with an Arduino, or for those who want to see how easy it is to make an Arduino project, I'll show you a servo tester you can build and program, it, program using inexpensive parts, a breadboard, and an Arduino Nano. This will be done in the third video. This tester is better than the one I show you in the first video of this series and serves as an easy introduction to how you can use Arduino microcontrollers in your electronic projects. I'll include the program that you can load into the Nano. And finally, in the last video in this series, I will show you a control board that I built that controls the 12 switches on my Conejos Valley Railroad layout as an example of a perfect switch control system. Here's the back side of my control system. As you can see, it's pretty simple. So let's get back to this first video, which deals with servos in general. One of the most popular servos is the S51, which is small, lightweight, and can be used for a number of applications. It comes with several pieces of hardware for connecting to raw control rods and also comes with screws and so on. The pieces of hardware fit on the top of the servo on the drive shaft. The servos come with a standard three wire connector. The brown or black lead is the negative power supply lead. The red or the orange lead is the positive power supply lead. The S51 can be powered by a voltage of 4.8 to 6 volts. Since the Arduino runs at 5 volts, the S51 can be readily adapted to be controlled by the Arduino microcontroller. Another popular servo, which is also small, is the SG90, shown here. Here's a comparison of the physical characteristics of the two servers, the S51 and the SG90. As you can see, they're quite similar in their characteristics. Although the SG90 is more powerful, the SG51 is quite, has quite enough torque for all of our applications. Here's an example of a servo tester that you can use to play around with servos. It costs about $12 on Amazon. Just search for servo consistency tester and you'll find it. When you first turn it on, it comes up with the correct settings for these two analog servos I've been talking about, the S51 and the SG90. Let's see how it looks with a real servo. I'll put it in this vise to hold it and plug it in. With this uh, continuity tester, it doesn't quite go to its limits. It should go from 0 to 180 degrees, and it's a little less than that. To power this servo tester, you can buy this uh, battery holder that holds four AA batteries, giving you basically five volts. 
or to power this you can do what I did I took a 5 volt uh, power cube and a, a USB cable and adapted it to fit this um, servo tester I talked about this in a recent video you can find the reference in the description below whatever you plug into this servo tester either the power supply or a servo connector make sure the, the black or brown negative lead is at the bottom of the of the plug so how is the signal sent to the servo all these analog servos use what's called pulse width modulation or PWM as you can see from this diagram a series of square wave pulses are sent to the servo with a 20 millisecond difference between any two pulses the servo interprets these pulses using a built-in microprocessor which reads the pulse widths the ser servo also has a variable resistor that is attached to the output shaft to feed back the position of the shaft if the pulses are short like one millisecond the servo moves to zero degrees if the pulse is 1.5 milliseconds it goes to 90 degrees and if it is two milliseconds it moves to 180 degrees by varying the pulse width between one and two two milliseconds any position between zero and 180 degrees can be set that is the purpose of the servo controller I talked about earlier or you can program an Arduino to control one or more servos see the third and fourth videos coming up soon in this series which will show you how to use an Arduino all microcontrollers such as the Arduino series come with libraries for handling the pulse width modulation so it is relatively easy to program a servo motor controller this is one of the modes that's available with this tester just continually goes back and forth so that's the end of this video for those of you who for those of you who are watching thank you very much I appreciate it and if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and sign up to my channel Dean's N-Scale Trains thanks for watching